What is up guys, this is YF Chess and today I'm going to be showing you one of my games I played in two, back in 2009. It was the World Under 16 Olympiad. I was top board for England and we were paired against Armenia. And my opponent was Tersa Hakian Samvel. Samvel Tersa Hakian. Uh, he was a GM at the time, very young GM, and he's almost 2600 now, and I'm sure he's going to be much stronger in the future. Uh, actually, in 2008, I lost to him in the same in the same uh, tournament, and I played a Dragondorf, Dragondorf, which is with A6 here, Sicilian Dragondorf, and yeah, I got absolutely crushed. Uh, so I knew I knew he was probably expecting that and prepared against it. So I deviated and played something different. So this is all normal dragon stuff. And actually, I have a confession. I don't I don't really know that much fairy in the mainline dragon. And I was pretty sure he he would uh, he would know the fairy really well here. So I decided to deviate a little bit, which. Uh, yeah, we, which my coach recommended as well, and I thought it was a good idea. So Charlie Story was coaching at the time, and we came up with what I, I like to call the decelerated dragon. Now. And the idea is that I'm not gonna castle, at least not early anyway. I'm just gonna keep the king in the center. Uh, the pros, pros of that is that I'm really flexible so if if white just does his normal stuff and comes and does all of this pushing up his pawns and big attack uh, he can do all of that but if my king still in the center I probably won't get mated and at the same time having said that I can castle at any time so if he uh, changes plans and tries to break open the center then I can suddenly castle and just laugh at him if he's moved his rook away or something uh, okay, so I played knight a, knight a5 here, and yeah, actually, uh, I played the same opening in the future, and I I think knight a5 is not the best move here. I pretty like h5 in this position. The reason is just to stop g4 and stop all of these pawn advances. And yeah, I play I play this in the later round actually, so maybe I'll, I'll post a video of that to you later. But okay, let's see the game. I played knight a5, now castle, and I went a6. Okay, again, I think I should be. I think h5 is a good move here. I actually saw a really nice game uh, when white went h3, and whenever white goes h3, you can really consider h4. So the point of h3 is to support support g4. But if you go h4, that that stops it. And another thing is, okay, let's say white plays a prophylactic move. You can even bring the rook into the game like this. And I, yeah, I saw a really nice game when uh, this h8 rook came onto onto the queen side here and just uh, checkmated white. But yeah, I think h5 is a good move here. Okay, I went a6. King b1. Good prophylactic move. B5 and now G4. Okay. And knight C4. That's where the knight usually heads. So I swap off that bishop, which is really strong. And now my rook's on a really good square. So he's he's coming to checkmate me. And okay, I'm I'm trying to attack him on this side as well. And now he played knight G3. But actually, I, H5s immediately is a really strong strong move here um, like I said I'm I'm not gonna be checkmated but he's probably gonna be able to get this in and then I have to, I have to come back like this which is pretty good for him I can switch plans and play like a Nidorf with e5 but again it's it's quite good for him this position uh, the reason I say knight g3 isn't so good as the immediate h5 is because after knight g3 I played a good move here I went h5 myself and that, that stops him from going h5, h6. The downside of h5 is that he can completely cut out my knights. So now my knight's in a 
really bad position. It's not it's not doing anything useful at all. And yeah, I have to try and bring it into the game later. Okay, so he comes he comes with his pawns rolling. He wants he really wants to checkmate me. And an important thing to note actually is that uh, whenever you push pawns, or when your opponent pushes pawns, you always lose some, uh, you lose control of some important squares, and pawns can never go backwards to control those squares again. So here, the pawn is controlling these two squares, and f4, which is decent move here, he's obviously he's going to go f5, but if you look at it, he's lost control of this square and this square, which I'm going to really try and take advantage of. So remember, remember, whenever you're moving pawns or whenever your opponent moves pawns, look at the squares they've lost control of. So, for example, here immediately I took use of that g4 square by going bishop g4. It's a nice, nice square for my bishop. At least much better than d7. D7 it wasn't doing that much, and I'm attacking the rook. So he went rook c1, and yeah, now now I decided to castle because. I'm not going to checkmate him with my just my rook and two pawns. I need to bring in my big big boys as well. Okay, he kept going f4 f5 and yeah, here again actually. Uh, he lost control of this square. So I took use of that with bishop e5. But the play play's been pretty good up to this point and now he made a an inaccuracy. He went knight knight back to e2. And in this position, it was really important for him to play this this move. This is a sneaky move, Queen D3. It's, so he's ignoring my threat by placing his own threat. Sometimes the the best defense is attack. And the point is that after I retreat, now he goes Knight E2. Now let let me just show you the difference here uh, with Knight E2 first. So you can say why not Knight E2 and then qu Queen. Queen d3. Okay, first of all, after knight e2, I, I went queen a8, and that that wouldn't have been possible if my if he had gone queen d3 first and kicked my rook back. Uh, and if he plays queen d3 now, I even have this option of bringing this rook to c8, which is really nice. So I don't have to retreat. I, I'm just bringing the pieces in. So these mo li little move order subtleties make a really big difference. If you went queen d3 here, uh, I think the game's game's in the balance. He might be slightly better here after I retreat, and then he he retreats. So he's got some attack going here, and my bishops are on good squares, but I don't have that much attack. Okay, he went knight e2, and now I played queen a8, which is good move. The point being that this square is really weak. Uh, whenever you're playing the dragon or dragon dwarf, a lot of the time your uh, white's gonna come at you with this pawn. And yeah, it's good because it's attacking you, but you have to notice that, like I said, he's lost control of these two really important, important squares. So I'm really, really gonna try and bite down on that. And the other thing is I can now bring my rook out somewhere along here. Okay, he played b3, which is a good move because my rook's on a really, really good square here. And I came back, and now he went queen d3. So now I'm in a position where my bishops are on pretty good squares, but these two pieces are just terribly bad, terribly bad. Uh, and yeah, I, I I came up with uh, the right right idea here to try and develop them. So I want to I want to move this knight out like this. And so first I went rook d8. And now, now I vacated the f8 square for my knight. Uh, okay, he went c4, which is a good move because if I take him, he's very happy. He can he can suddenly bring his knight over, and his knight's coming onto good squares. And also, after c4, he doesn't have this this big hole here anymore. But there's a downside to that as well, which is I can, I can try and I'm gonna break open on the A file. And okay, if he doesn't take, I'm gonna take him, and then this A file is really nice. So took me here. I recapture. 
and now he wants to swap off. He's he's very happy if I if I swap off it because uh, his king's actually in a lot more danger than mine. So th this ending is probably a bit better for me, but before the ending, it's even better for me. So I don't I don't want to swap off him. So I went back to a8 and again picking up on this oops this weakness here. So he goes he has to go back queen d3 and I c I'm gonna confess here it did cross my mind just uh, take a draw against the grandmaster it's queen a4 queen b3 queen a8 <laughs> uh, but the match situation looked like I, I, I definitely needed the win uh, if we wanted any chance because their team was really strong and yeah all of our positions apart from my board looked pretty pretty bad so match situation gave me courage and I also, I also knew, like, in the bottom of my heart, I, I must be, must be better here. I mean, this king's open, my bishops are in good skirts. The only bad piece is my knight. But like I said, I'm, I'm gonna move that over. Okay, so this rook's not doing too much, so I move it onto the B file, and I had some ideas, which you'll, you'll see. Uh, okay, he moves the rook to E1, and this is good because it's not immediately protecting e4 but it, it's like uh, indirect defense could be useful in the future uh, so I continue with my plan here knight f8 uh, yeah actually it's really hard for him to attack me because he's tied down to this this weakness here and my like I said my bishops are on s such good squares okay he tries to blockade with knight b3 uh, and now, now I've got a pretty nice forcing combination. So if, if you want to have a go, you can pause the video now and see if you can find a good continuation for black. I went bishop f3. And this is forcing because he has to defend, defend e4. Looks like knight d2 attacking my bishop. And then I have to, I have to come back or something. But actually here... I've got a really good intermediate move. The best form of defense, defending that bishop, is attack. I'll go b3. So I, I make my, my own threat, which is greater. I'm gonna go queen a2 mate if he takes my bishop. So he has to respond. He goes a takes b3. And actually now, queen a1 check, which looks really good, doesn't actually achieve that much because I can check him and check him, but his king runs to d1. And it's not so easy to make progress. Okay, his king's his king stuck on a really awkward square, but I can't open any files, and his pieces are all all defending his king. So here I found a I had a stronger move in mind, which is rook takes b3 check. Even though it's defended two times, I can I can do this because if knight takes, I've diverted the knight from e4 and. I win the queen, so he has to he has to go queen takes. But now I go rook b8, and yeah, if I if I get that queen, it's game over. So he tried to block with bishop b6. Now now I've diverted the queen. I can take this guy first with check and check. He blocks, and finally this r terry bad piece on h7 comes comes into the game with a devastating effect like he's got he's got no way to defend this b6 square now so i've i've used all my pieces in this attack i'm an exchange down after i win back the bishop but his king is in such a bad position and my pieces are all on really good squares uh, yeah, I don't think you can you can tell me where I can better place one of my pieces in this position. So, okay, he he gets gets out of this file. I take attacking the queen, and now it's now it's just a mop up mop up operation. I have to bring my pieces forwards. His king's and still in a really bad score. I'm threatening knight d3 check, so he runs. I go knight d3 anyway, and now bring the rook in, knight c1, I just took, I just took everything off here actually, if king takes, 
I go queen queen c4 and the rook goes. So he has to go queen takes. But now queen here. He has to go king e1 to defend the rook and bishop g3, forcing rook f2. And he actually resigned after playing his move here, uh, which is understandable because, I mean, first of all, even if I just took that, the queen endings, the queen and pawn endings completely winning, but I can probably uh, do even better with queen e4. Yeah, just queen e4 here. Because after this, I'm going to skewer the queen. And, yeah, this way I'm, I'm in the rook for free. So, that's... That's one of the first grandmasters I beat, and yeah, I'm quite I'm quite proud of that game. I hope you I hope you enjoyed watching it. Unfortunately, the team still lost one three, but I'm I think in the future I f uh, we're gonna do better. So thanks thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.